Welcome to Book of Acts Now, Global School and Global Church. We're glad that you've joined us here today as we're continuing our study in the Hebrew alphabet. And today we're looking at the letter P. And so we, we want to ask you to tune in. And if you have your notes or you have your Hebrew alphabet, have that ready. And if you don't have one, you can find one on HebrewForChristians.com. And uh, it's just always handy to have that to look at because we look at various letters, even though the letter we're looking at today is this, which is pay. What does it mean? Well, it means to speak, to open or to begin. But it, basically, the basic meaning is the, the mouth opens to speak. Okay, so let's take a look at some biblical words that use the idea of pay. Here we have, reading from right to left, this is the P sound because it's pay. And these two dots is the E sound. This is the lamid L sound with E. And this has no sound unless it has a vowel with it. This is Aleph. So this is pronounced from right to left. P-E-L-E. Pele. Pele. And so what does it mean? Well, this is the idea of a wonder or a miracle. And so... It means this, if you're going to be involved with a miracle, you're going to be speaking with the authority of the Father. Would you like to see a miracle? Amen. Hear from God and speak what God says in His authority and you'll see a miracle. Amen. Amen. So what does that tell us? When you're using His Word, you're in the right place because you're speaking for Him. But you need to use it the way He tells you to use it. And it releases the miracle power of God. Okay, the word for redeem. The word for redeem is made up of three letters. And so again, we have the pay. This uh, would have the A sound, this vowel. This is the D, dalit. It has an A sound. And, uh, and this has, uh, it has no sound, but it, it means to reveal or declare. So what does redeem really mean? Well, if you look in the Hebrew you get an idea of what redemption is. Redemption is the mouth of the door of covenant that is declared. So whenever you're speaking covenant from the door, which is where the blood was applied, if you're speaking from the place of covenant, you're going to see a revelation of God's redemption. So to redeem, to be redeemed, you're applying the blood at the door of covenant. Now, there's a, there's a multi-layered application. You can have that applied at your home, and like they did with the Passover, and apply the blood to the door, right? You can apply it to the door of your heart. And when you do that, it brings redemption. It brings revelation also. And so this is pronounced from right to left, P-A-D-A, -A, Pada. See, you're reading Hebrew already today. All right, so fruit. What is the fruit of the Spirit all about? Well, let's take a look. Three letters. Again, we have uh, the Pei. This is the P sound. The double dot here, that's the E, right? So we have P-E. This is Resh, which has the R sound. So that's R-E, and this has no sound at the end unless it's an E sound. Okay, so this is pronounced peri, peri. All right, so what does it mean? Well, it means to speak. What does resh mean? It means the highest person, right? So to speak the highest person's work or the work of the highest person, that will bear fruit. What's one of the greatest things you can think of concerning the work of the highest person? Calvary and the crucifixion. Yeah? Amen. That's the highest work of the highest person. If you speak that, it will bear fruit. If you speak that, will it defeat the devil? Will it defeat curses? And sickness and sin? Yes, it will. That's the fruit. Amen? Amen? I like this, the word for pray. Would y'all like to know what the biblical idea of what God has in mind for prayer, for praying? Yeah. Okay, so this is what it means to pray. 
Again, you have the P and the A, and then you have a double lamin. Now, there's different meanings for lamin. We know that it, it means a shepherd's staff. We know it means authority, but it also means tongue. So, what's prayer? Come on now. To speak with the authority of the tongue or to speak with the tongue of tongues? You mean speaking in tongues is in Hebrew? Oh, yeah. The very word pray means that. Wow. This is pronounced P-A-L-E-L. -L. Hallel. All right, and then we have solve. Anybody would like, would you like to solve problems? Let me tell you the Bible solution for solving problems. Here it is. To speak the covenant of the highest person. Wow. How will that solve problems? Look, when you apply the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, your chaos will begin to leave your life. And most problems that we have today are the direct result of sin and chaos. Amen. The word shalom. For those of you that have been listening to the teachings, you know the word shalom. S-H, fire that consumes, lamed, authority, M, chaos. The fire of God that consumes what has authority over your chaos will solve your problem and heal your diseases. That's why Christ said in Luke chapter 10, go out and speak shalom over all the families and over the, the homes before I come to your city. Amen. And then you may heal the, the people. Why? Because sickness always has a root to it. And so if you're taking out what has authority over the root that's causing the sickness, the sickness has to go. Amen. Wow. Is there a root to the virus? called the crown virus you know the devil is is behind this he's behind all sickness amen because he's behind sin so it's called the crown virus which means it is the crown or the king of all viruses impacting the world bringing death destruction but let me tell you something there's one thing that defeats the crown virus would you like to know it's better than a vaccine. It's better than an antidote. There's one thing that defeats the crown virus that's greater than that crown virus that the devil put in place. Amen. How many know that our Savior, the Lamb of God, wore a crown on his head? You know what it was? It was the crown of thorns. Because he was bearing our sickness, our viruses, our afflictions on Calvary. And when he did that, he defeated the crown virus. And the way to defeat it is to apply what he did. See, that's why it says in Colossians 2.15 that he triumphed over the devil and all of his angels. Making public spectacle of them at Calvary. We need to remind him of his defeat and that he has no power. Amen. And that virus has no power over you and me when we apply the blood because the one who wore the crown of thorns defeated the crown virus. Yes. This is a good word. We need, we need to not react in fear to these things because I believe this virus comes with a spirit of fear. And when the spirit of fear enters in, it makes us vulnerable to the virus. It comes as, uh, as partners, a double curse. And we're not going to fear death. We're not going to fear the virus because it's been defeated. By his stripes, the Bible says you were healed. Not you can be healed. You were healed past tense. We've already been healed of all this stuff. Amen. And so we need to take it and nail it there Amen. on the tree. Nail it to the tree. It's helping anyone. I love, I love the symbolism of that. The crown virus is a puny virus. 
It has no power and no authority because the one who wore the real crown that matters on Mount Calvary has defeated that thing. Amen. All right, signs and wonders, miracles to speak the authority or with the authority of the Father and we get that in His Word and the rhema, revelation of His Word. To be redeemed. The mouth of the door of covenant is revealed or declared. It brings revelation. Hey, you know what I think of when I look at that is the scripture in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. If you speak with your mouth and believe with your heart, thou shalt be saved. The word there in the Greek is sozo. It means thou shalt be made whole. Speak with your mouth and believe in your heart and you will be made whole. And delivered from the power of sin. Fruit, you speak of the highest person's work, the work of his hands. The greatest work of his hands is when they were nailed Mount Calvary to a tree. To pray, to speak with the authority of the tongue or with the tongue of tongues. Let me give you a clue about that. If you really want to have authority in your prayer, pray back to God his promises. It releases authority because you're releasing the word of God into the atmosphere and back to him. And guess what? Even the principalities have to submit to the word when it's released to the atmosphere. Now that should give us a clue. When we release the word of God in the atmosphere over your house and over your family, the word of God that's active and alive in the atmosphere is still doing something. I want peace over my household. I speak shalom over my house. I release that into the atmosphere and it begins to change. I was working in an office one time as a chaplain. And I noticed when I started working there, this was in Fresno, California. There was a lot of chaos in the office and people weren't getting along and they were fighting. It just was not a good work environment. So I started going in early and declaring, this is the embassy of God. And the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18, it says that I'm an ambassador for Christ. Well, where do ambassadors work? They work in embassies. I said, I'm an ambassador. I'm here at my office to work. I'm coming in early. I'm declaring this is the embassy of God. Amen. And all these nurses and people who are working here, they're in my embassy because I'm the ambassador here. And so we're not going to tolerate the anger and the um, resentment, the backbiting, and all the works of the flesh that are going on. No! Yes. You know, in the, nat in the natural, if we have an embassy in Moscow, Russia, even though it's located in Russia, it has Marine Guards protecting it because that embassy belongs to the United States. When I live in an embassy, or I claim my workplace as an embassy, that belongs to God, and He doesn't send Marines. He sends His angels that are better than that. And they stand guard and watch over whatever is declared to be His embassy. He guards and protects. You know what happened? Every, the atmosphere and everything in that office began to change. And... and People are coming in. Well, it just kind of feels different. I'm glad we're getting along better. They didn't know what was going on. We were doing spiritual warfare in that office. So one day, the uh, the gal that was uh, over the clinicians, who was over all the nurses, she said, uh, "Chaplain, come into my office and close the door." She said, "I know what you've been doing, and I appreciate it." But she said, "We're having a lot of confusion out in the homes this week. A lot of chaos. Would you lay your hands on that board with all the names on it? Pray for them too." I'm like, "Yeah." We claim that as an extension of our embassy, and therefore all these homes are covered. And they get to have the peace of God and the covering of God. And all confusion has to leave. Wow. Everywhere I go as an ambassador, I can claim it as part of the embassy. Amen. I claim my city with the embassy anointing and covering of God. And all sickness and sin and defilement and sex trafficking and drug trafficking, <clears throat> it all has to leave. 
because it's, this is a part of the embassy of God. I dare you, devil. You will not bring your traffic into my city because as the ambassador of God, I'm declaring there's a canopy of covering and protection over my city. It's a part of the embassy of God. And we're giving you no, we're serving you notice right now, devil, out of my city. Amen. Listen, when will the church ever show up and use its authority like it needs to? It needs, it needs to do all of that. But we can begin to apply it where we are. Amen? Amen. Let's start by taking authority over our own houses. That's our it. own households. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for um, this Hebrew letter to speak. That we can speak with your name. Speak with your authority. See the miracles take place. See ch the atmosphere changed. And begin to see fruit because we're speaking of the one who wore the crown. Bless us this week as we continue to give you praise and put you first in our lives. We thank you in Yeshua's holy name. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm just getting warmed up so I can preach.